Warrior changes? Okay, yeah, we could we could probably do the warrior changes in three minutes or so. Uh, let, let me let me take a look at this. So one of the things that I noticed at, when I first logged into to my arms warrior today is that when I switched to arms, I still had access to devastate. I still had access to revenge and shield barrier. Now those are normally things that you only have access to as a prot warrior. And I was like, is this a bug? But no, that's that's what the patch notes say. So one of the things that you'll be able to do now is that when you go to defensive stance, you'll have the access to uh, revenge. Devastate and shield barrier and one of the things that ends up happening is revenge does generate 20 rage for you And then devastate does cost no rage and has a 30% chance to reduce uh, to reset the cooldown on revenge in addition to dealing like Half the damage of whirlwind or something So one of the problems that warriors faced uh, Early on was that if you went defensive stance you had no offensive capabilities whatsoever because everything costs rage So you wouldn't be able to use any of your abilities and then that meant that you had to be in battle stance all the time to do any damage, which made you pretty squishy. Now, this sort of ends up helping two problems. Is that one, you have access to abilities that don't cost rage and generate rage in defensive stance. Two, uh, it makes you a lot tankier since you, can, since you can actually use defensive stance. Plus, you generate a lot of rage a lot of times, so you might have more rage than you can use. And instead of deciding to go into battle stance and spend all your rage with Whirlwind, you can actually use Shield Barrier, which greatly uh, increases your defensive capabilities as an Arms Warrior anyway. So, we basically, uh, it, that helps solve a couple problems with Arms Warriors. Our, uh, our inability to be in defensive stance, which leads to a defensive uh, weakness. And, um, it also solves the problem of having very few abilities to use outside of Mortal Strike, Colossus Smash, and that's it. Now you have access to Revenge, now you have access to Devastate, and both of those are free abilities, essentially. Only thing is that um, that Revenge does um, generate rage. It has a nine second cooldown on it, though. However, your Revenge can be the cooldown of Revenge can be reset by Devastate, and it can be reset by dodging or parrying, which means that you know through the course of a fight, you usually will end up dodging or parrying something. That also means that you can use Die by the Sword and generate tons of rage by parrying every attack that hits you, melee attack, and you can use re just revenge spam with that, so that's some pretty cool stuff. So first off, those are the biggest warrior changes that I'm seeing right now, and it does address a lot of the problems that warriors faced. Defensive lack, not being able to use defensive stance, and not having really very many abilities to use outside of like Colossus Smash or Mortal Strike and then Execute, so some pretty heads up changes by the developers, and I'm pretty interested to keep playing this once the servers restart and come back up to see exactly how it's going to affect the warrior rotation, but from what I've seen so far, some really, really cool stuff, and I think I'll probably move in the right direction. Oh, and also, this is already the case, but Rallying Cry, uh, Spell Reflect, and Intervene, or Safeguard, no longer require you to be in defensive stance, so more cool stuff. I, th I think that Blizzard's made some heads-up choices, and uh, like I said, we'll have to see how, how it all ends up working out as we continue to play, but uh, server's going down, we got to wait a little while, but once it gets back, we'll get right back to it.